Welcome to r slash relationships, where we get to hear people's relationship problems. I, 27F, don't see any future with my partner, 30 meters, but he does. I've been with my partner for 3 years now. I have a 6 year old from a previous long term relationship, where we were both besotted, but then it gradually broke down after the baby came along. My current boyfriend has had no real interest in getting to know my daughter, and I find myself only seeing him when she is at her dad's. He's casually mentioned previously us moving together etc, and I've explained to him I don't see anything like that happening due to the lack of interest. As much as I do love him, and we have had an amazing 3 years, I want to end the relationship, because I don't see any future with him, me and my daughter, and my gut instinct is recently telling me to leave, before it develops further. He's amazing, but he doesn't want children, and before we got together always said he never sees his life that way, but our relationship kinda just, kept going. He mentions the future more and more, and I keep explaining I just can't see it. I need to end it, because it isn't fair, it seems to have gone from a good time relationship to a serious one recently, and it's made me uncomfortable. I have sat down and spoke to him about how distant I've made myself the last few weeks slash months, but I can't bring myself to end it, because I feel like, as much of a valid reason it is as a parent to end it, as a non-parent it may come across, that I don't care slash love him to continue this way to try and vision a future. Not sure what I'm wanting to get out of this post, but it's helped me writing it down. Now for the advice. If your goal is not to hurt him, then every day you put off the inevitable is going to make it harder for him when you break up. You are already adjusting to the end of the relationship in your head, he is not. That said, I don't think you need to care what he thinks. He doesn't really want to join your family, so you're ending it. Pure and simple. It's natural that you would find this difficult, and you're probably going to miss him, but your decision is for the best. Don't overthink this. You are already adjusting to the end of the relationship in your head. He is not this 100% opus. It's cruel and selfish to allow yourself to get over him with the comfort blanket of still having him around, and deny him the same opportunity. End it. Stop waiting until you're ready to pick the last bit of this band-aid off. He deserves to know too. Quote, me and my daughter, and my gut instinct is recently telling me to leave, before it develops further. This says all that need to be said. Your intuition is telling you what to do. Listen to it. Now for the next story. I'm old, 48F, somewhat disabled and want to leave my partner, 49 meters, but he tells me I'll sink without him and he's correct. Suck it up, and accept this is my life. Hi everyone, I don't know what to do. Why ask strangers? Well, I've seen some great advice on here, B, I think unbiased third parties can see things more clearly. If I'm screwed, please just be honest. I don't need positive encouragement, I need to be slapped in the face with the truth. Right up front, I'll admit and agree with anyone who notices this fact. Over my life I have made several bad choices which landed me in this situation. The facts, I've been with my partner, where I'm from, without getting into complicated explanations, we aren't considered common law, and I'm not entitled to anything, that's not really my focus here, but I know it may be a question for some, but no, I'm not entitled to support, in fact I moved out last year which nullified any common law status. I have a disability which causes me to struggle with focus, and also some chronic pain, which over the years, has limited my mobility and ability, to work in certain jobs. I also think I'm a loyal, kind partner, maybe not so much these days, and I've truly loved him over the years. I moved out last year, because he cheated on me, he's cheated in various ways over the years, but this was the first time I know of that was physical. I've been living off savings and a part-time remote job since then. I've remained in his life because I love him. But I now see it's just never going to be a good relationship again. I'll never trust him again, ever. But he's scaring me. He wants to be with me. He wants me to live with him and marry him. He tells me I'm old. No, 48 isn't a senior citizen. But come on, it's getting up there. He tells me I have no career slash education and I'm not going to find a job that will pay a good living wage, probably true. He tells me the likelihood of finding a new partner for me is low, because I'm an older woman with a disability and no career, very true. 
but for him it's high. He's successful with an excellent job. He tells me he loves me, and he wants me to be with him, and he's scared for my future without him, but if I go, he'll be fine, and we'll find another partner. But he's always telling me I'm in a very bad position and he's scared for my future. I'm second guessing myself. I don't know what to do. I have a small retirement fund, I mean very small, $40,000. I can support myself, but only because I'm using some savings that I have. I'm trying to get a better job, and I hope it will happen after lockdown, but no matter what I'm never going to make great wages, even if I get trained in something. Our relationship isn't good for me. I know he doesn't respect me. He thinks I've made terrible choices in life, and he's right, and he highly values education. He has a master's degree, and I have one year of college. I know he's not very attracted to me physically, and throughout our relationship he has sought out attention from other women many times. He wants me, because I'm good to him, and make his life better. But other than financial security, he doesn't make my life better. In fact, he has anger issues, so I often walk on eggshells. And I'm often insecure, because I don't trust him, and I never know what he's up to. He's lied to me a lot in the past about other women. I'm looking for advice slash input. Am I an idiot to leave this situation at my age? Should I suck it up and find strategies to make it better? Would the stress of living hand to mouth and loneliness be worse than living with someone I don't trust? I think it would be better to be poor and alone than with someone who chips away at your soul. That's the bottom line. I can't tell you that you'll find another partner. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. My mom is 20 years older than you. High school education, barely employed all her life, has made terrible financial decisions and is screwed basically. And while she has dry spells she also always manages to have someone in her life who she hangs out with. If she stayed with a guy out of fear, that would be it. That would be the guy. No real chances to find someone else. I know you're afraid of potentially being alone. But being with this guy means you are guaranteed to be alone. Because he isn't on your side, when you're with him, you're already alone. Absolutely not. Every day you stay, part of you dies. My wife's disabled godmother was in a similar spot 10 years ago with her verbally abusive husband. She was a lot better off afterwards. How you're living is no way to live. And I don't mean any limitations relating to your disability. Everyone deserves a safe home. You deserve a safe home. If it means you live with a sibling, a roommate, whatever, you need to be in an emotionally and physically safe place and this ain't it. Do not accept this. He does not want a partner, he wants a punching bag. He wants a live and made he can fuck sometimes. It will get worse the more he thinks he has you trapped, especially if you marry him. If you walk on eggshells now for verbal abuse, before you're married and locked down, it will escalate into physical abuse. Your savings? He will needle you into relinquishing them bit by bit. He's not sorry. He will do it again. And I bet you're not nearly as undesirable as you think you are. Who wouldn't feel like an ugly fuck up after spending years with a partner that openly belittles them and tells them he doesn't desire them. You're worth more. The older you get the more difficult it will be to leave. So leave as soon as possible. I don't know if you'll find a partner, but it's a distinct possibility. I do know you will find friends and a community when you're not under his thumb. When you're free to be yourself, it will mitigate any loneliness you feel. And who knows? People have met and fallen in love way older than 48. Don't give up. This does not have to be the rest of your life. Now for the next story. 28 meters. BF won't say I love you after one year. Talking about his feelings leads to arguments. Need unbiased advice. Relationship recap. Dating for one year. He's a coach, and I'm a teacher. He is getting his doctorate. I'm getting my doctorate. We see each other when his schedule allows it, because he's extremely busy due to work and school. We rarely argue. On paper he is absolutely perfect. But when it comes to feelings he will not express his emotions to me. He refuses to use pet names because they are needy. So no babe, baby, etc or even though I want to use them. Argue happened when I asked him to call me pet names which resulted in I won't call him pet names. He has never said he misses me because to him missing someone is needy. He's never called me beautiful or complimented me. Ever. When bringing up my feelings which I almost catch myself saying I love you, he will shut down and says he isn't there yet. It's been a year. 
When I ask what I can do better he tells me that I need to focus on myself and shouldn't need him for validation. And that his actions speak louder than words. He's an independent man and I'm an independent woman. But not as independent as him. I need unbiased opinions of what to do. I don't want to talk about this because I'm scared it'll just lead to us breaking up. Maybe if I wait a few more months he will love me. I don't want to corner him into saying it when it isn't genuine. Now for the advice. You two are extremely incompatible. He wants a relationship where he is not expected to express any level of normal emotions or commitment. And yes, what you are wanting is normal. He also doesn't want you to express normal emotional attachment because it makes him feel pressured and lacking. This isn't the man for you because this is who he is. He needs to be with someone who is also emotionally devoid and attached, and you need to be with someone who is normal in terms of emotional expression and attachment. I'll be brutally honest, I hope it's okay. This man has told you time and again that this is who he is and this is how he is and how he behaves, which I think was great and honest. Yes, yes, you are not like this, you need more things emotionally, you have also expressed this. He shut it down and said, again, that this isn't what he wants and what he needs. Yes, yes, you two are incompatible. Your love languages are totally different, your needs in a relationship are totally different. He is who he is and he doesn't want to change and maybe he can't change. And you have no right to ask him that since he is happy as he is. You are also how you are and he has no right to ask you to change but you have changed and you are suppressing your needs to please him and to pretend to be more compatible. My advice is to end the relationship. I know it will be hard but there are men out there who want the same things as you and have the same love language. Don't waste your time on this anymore. Now for the last story. Me, 23 meters, with my girlfriend, 20f, since May, she hooked up with somebody, after we were hanging out every day, saying I love you, and she said she wasn't seeing anybody else. The beginning of this story isn't completely necessary, but I want to paint the best picture possible of my situation. I'm 23 and she is 20. I met this girl on Tinder last year in mid-March as I was just coming back home from traveling due to COVID, and she was coming back home from school for the same reasons. We talked on Tinder for a few days, and then moved to Snapchat for about two more weeks. After that I gave her my number and we literally texted 24 over 7, talked about our lives in depth, made jokes about meeting on Tinder and just talked about past experiences with people. After we felt comfortable with each other during the pandemic, we decided to meet up for an in-person date on May 8th. So roughly two months after we started talking. At this point, she had been talking about all of her past experiences in the past tense, and when I asked if she was talking to anybody else, she said no. Anyway, this first date went really well, and we decided to meet up again on May 15th for another dinner date. We watched a movie, made out, talked a lot more, and she said she really liked me, I really liked her too, and told her that. After that we saw each other multiple times a week, and fell completely in love with each other. By mid-June we were saying I love you renting airbnbs for coast trips, mountain trips, and just to see new little cities. After about 3 months of this, we start talking about past experiences with people and she mentioned she ended things with a guy she was talking to right before our first date, but I remembered from a previous conversation she once said that it all ended before we even started talking. Mind you, she said during our talking phase she wasn't seeing or talking to anybody else. I wasn't either. This incongruence in information ate at me, as I may know about dates and already visualize timelines, as I'm a history student. About a week later we are laying in bed, and she is on her snapchat, and I intentionally am looking at the screen in more detail, and see that she last talked to this guy in late May, which is different from both of the stories she told me, and overlapped with us being physical. After this, I made the mistake I still regret to this day, and looked at her phone, when she went to the bathroom. It was a text from him in late May giving her his address for her to come over so they could hook up. I didn't want to initially tell her I went through her phone, so I got more serious in the coming days and told her I had a gut feeling she was lying to me about the dates. She got really shifty and said that I was making too big of a deal of the date slip up she had and she really can't remember at all. After I pressed more, she said she thought about it and knew for a fact it was over in April. 
She also called me crazy for caring about this so much. After this I told her what I did and how I knew she was lying and she confessed to it all and said she regretted it. We broke up for about 2 weeks and then she reached back out to me and we started dating again under the condition that there would be no more lies. This happened in late November. Since then I have been struggling with the gaslighting, major lie she told, and how much it hurt me that she could hold on to that secret after all these months of intense connection, including a road trip from New York to Wa to go back to family. She says she really regrets it, and other than that stain on our relationship I really think she is the one. I'm still hurt by it, but I feel bad bringing it up around her, because I don't want to make her feel continually punished for her past actions. It just really hurts that she lied to me for so many months, was having sex with another guy after we were physical, and she told me she wasn't seeing anybody at the time. She apparently didn't even like him, and they only hooked up a few times which makes even less sense to me, since we really liked each other by then, and I treated her so well. Should I end things with her, if I can't get over it? Any other thoughts? Thank you. Now for the advice. You broke up over this already, and you took her back. If you get back together, that means you forgive and let this go. If you can't let this go, then break up. There's no sense in the both of you being miserable. Honestly, it's troubling to me that she hooked up with some random dude during a pandemic. You put your health at risk. Keep in mind that some people feel like they can do whatever they want up until the point where the exclusivity talk happens and other people are one at a time, even when things aren't explicitly exclusive. Now you know which type she is. Thank you for the input. I do agree about her putting my health at risk more so because of the pandemic, but also sexual health. I really want to feel emotionally over this, but the seeds of mistrust are hard to take back. Well, we know for sure one of the worst things you can do is to become scorned and resentful over it, so try to avoid letting that happen. If you want to continue it with a relaxed fun and more casual attitude you can do that. Just accept whatever explanation your brain gives you to ease the dissonance and try not to think about it too much. If you think you can't and instead you're going to be petty about it and hold it over her head for months, you might just end it now and save everyone the trouble. She lied about something important early on and there's nothing wrong with not being able to get over that. However, you need to make a decision and stand by it. You clearly aren't going to be able to deal with this, so you need to break up with her and cut contact for good instead of doing this wishy-washy dance with it, like you are now. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video please consider subscribing as it really motivates me to make more of these videos. Have an amazing day.